In this episode of Travelogue, we follow the Pearl River into the mountains of Nanning, where its tributaries have literally carved out the landscape and created a unique ecosystem where exotic wildlife thrives. The Pearl River, known in China as the Zhujiang, with its eastern, western and northern tributaries, it's actually a vast river system. The third longest river in China and the second largest by volume. Continuing on on our adventure, we arrive in Nanning in southern China. So as we head further up the Pearl River, we head into the mountain. Although you can't tell from here, Nanning is surrounded by rings of mountains. And back when we didn't have good roads, the river was an important form of transport. And that's why for centuries, Nanning was a bustling distribution center on the Pearl River. And even today is an important meeting point for China and the ASEAN countries. I'm Turan. Welcome to Nanning. China isn't actually a member of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN. But it does maintain very close ties with the organization. Something that's very evident here in Nanning. As the capital of Guangxi, which has a border with Vietnam and a coastline on the South China Sea, Nanning is the ideal focal point for the relationship. Every year since 2005, Nanning has been the host of the China ASEAN Expo. And, um, you know, people come from uh, all across the ASEAN countries to do business here. And obviously where there's business, there's tons of food. I've got to hand it to these people. They've really nailed the Asian street food experience. It's loud, it's crowded, and it's mouth-watering. What is this called? Broda. 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 Oh, okay. Broda. How long are you in China for? I have been in two months. These banana pancakes will be familiar to anyone who's ever backpacked around Southeast Asia. But don't ask me what these are, though. Oh, man, it's so hot here. I need to get something to drink. This is what is the main ingredients in this colorful concoction are pandan leaf and rice paste. It certainly looks refreshing, but the proof of the pudding, as they say, is in the eating. Ah, oh, that certainly did the trick. In case you haven't noticed, Nanning can get pretty hot. But while us humans may wilt in the subtropical climate, not so the vegetation. Welcome to the world's biggest medicinal herb garden. This riot of greenery is in fact a meticulously planned supply base for traditional Chinese medicine. Okay,你看一下,这边的话就是我们的藤本,植物,藤类,主挡了阳光,然后下面的话就是比较喜欢阴森的植物。经过左扭一下，右扭一下，然后自己攀爬过河，攀爬过江，就去到处去寻找阳光。也属于中药吗？是的，浸入药，然后把它切成片，主要是起到一个强筋壮骨的一个作用。哦，就小孩，然后老人
then, well, if that doesn't do the trick as a cold remedy, there are other alternatives.茉莉花、金银花、菊花三种配在一起茉莉花花坛纸壳的金银花、清热解毒菊花、清肝明目下火的五份的比例来的话就是茉莉花的话要占三份金银花、菊花的话各占一份冲泡五分钟就可以了I can see why they usually put um, sugar in this, but I mean it's 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 a nice beverage, and um, the essence of traditional Chinese medicine is very different to Western medicine. Western medicine just goes straight to the root of the problem, cuts it off, and that's that. But for Chinese medicine, it's more about finding a balance in your body to promote long-term good health as opposed to just killing off uh, a disease or something. So in the long run. A cup of this tea might do much better than paracetamol. Nanning is home to over 4 million people, more than the population of LA. And with so many mouths to feed, naturally there's no shortage of restaurants and good food. With so much water around, there's no problem growing rice here. And rice is very much the staple. A particular local favourite is rice noodles, a quite astronomical 100 million bowls of which are consumed every year. Rice paste. Now that's something you don't hear about very often. But it really is the best way to describe this gloopy mixture. It's clearly messy business, endlessly kneading the rice flour dough to the point that you can squeeze it through a sieve like toothpaste. No wonder their noodles are so soft. Oh, super soft. There's um. It's a bit sour, it's savoury, it almost slides down your throat. I can totally see why people will eat this three times a day. Bottoms up! Ah! Oh, wow, that was amazing. <laughs> now I just need a nap. <laughs> Coming up next, we'll learn how once poor villagers are attracting tourists by turning their biggest disadvantage into their greatest asset. Two hours drive northwest from Nanning is Mashan. Most of the people living here are ethnic Zhuang. But it's the landscape we're coming to see. These dramatic cast peaks have been formed in the course of thousands of years. 
by water eating away at the limestone rock. So quiet here. So um, this place is called a Nong, which is essentially a village encircled by a ring of mountains. And the way it works here is uh, if you've got a, um, you know, a circle of mountains, it's inside, there's a space, that's a village. Over the other mountain, you have another bit of space, that's another village. So these Nongs are essentially physically bounded in by mountains on all four sides. This particular Nong is called Sanjia. Its isolation inevitably meant poverty in the past. But then someone had the bright idea of turning the reason for its isolation, the mountains, into a reason for people to visit. And now Sanjia is aiming to go up in the world, propelled by a brand new local tourist pursuit. Okay. I've done indoor rock climbing before, but I've never actually done it for real. And uh, I'm sure it's vastly different to uh, what I've experienced before. But because the rope's already here, it seems like it will be relatively safe. Okay. Okay, that's the most important thing. Here we go. Oh. oh, wow. This is pretty intimidating. Oh man. This is intense. Oh my god, I don't really want to go any higher. This really is a um a contest against your own willpower. And right now I think my willpower is failing. Okay, I'll admit, it doesn't look like I've climbed very far. But I do have an excuse. I'm terrified of heights. This is this does not feel safe to me. I know it's safe, but God. Man, the things I do for travelogue. Alright, now let's see how the pros do it. My coach here has been climbing for 18 years. And now, he gets invitations from all across China to open up new rock climbing routes. With his help, the Nongs are hoping to lift themselves up out of poverty by becoming a hotspot for climbing enthusiasts. But it's not just the mountains that are getting a facelift. Uh 
它对内是一个开放的一个公共空间，村民可以在这里就是聊天、看书。然后对外的话，我们希望它能够是成为一个像外来的一些客人的一个咨询中心。然后就是外面的客人来到这里之后，会咨询我们这里有什么好玩的、好吃的，还有有哪里有住的，那我们就可以给他们做推荐。It looks like everything's ready for the expected visitors. The only trouble is they've yet to arrive. Still, when they do, they can be sure of a warm reception. Around the village, and then she was like, "Oh, come sit with us! Come sit with us!" In a completely different language, but you know, kind of figured it out. People are really warm-hearted <laughs> over here. How <laughs> can? It's the case all across rural China that the working-age adults have mostly left their village in search of jobs. Only the old and very young remain. Here, though, it may just be that when the tourists come, so too will the former residents back to their homes. And here, to tempt the visitors, we have this region's two biggest draws combined: its ethnic Zhuang culture and its spectacular scenery. And what finer example can there be of what the ladies are singing about than the beautiful mountain and river scenery of the Hongshui? Two,两边的喇叭性都要喝这个水，用这个水，就是广西的母亲河了。我小的时候就是在这里长大了，老了以后呢，这时候还要回来。We're currently traveling along the Hongshui River, which, although not as famous, I think it's just as beautiful as Halongbe or Yangshuo, and it's one of the main tributaries of the Pearl River. And uh, in fact, if you head down that way, you'll eventually reach Guangdong, Macau. But we're heading upstream towards a place called Phai Se, and we're getting closer and closer towards the source of the Pearl River. Coming up next, we learn how the sheer force of water can cause a mountain to collapse, and we make our very own journey to the center of the Earth. Almost. Good six hour drive to Bai Se and our destination, which is in Luoyi County. There's a very good reason why we've chosen to travel by road. Here, the rivers are conspicuously absent, they've all gone underground. But everywhere we go, we see the marks they've left on the land. Uh, nervous, but also excited at the same time. Um, we're heading to the world's deepest sinkhole, and uh, on the way here, already passed by a bunch which just look like they had 
no end in sight. There were just absolute vertical drops. But this is going to be even more frightening. Because when you think about it, this sinkhole formed when a part of the mountain I'm standing on collapsed. Oh my word. I mean, it's, it, it really is something else. This is the Dashu Tiankong, which is uh, the world's deepest sinkhole. It's 613 meters deep. And I mean, it's, it's so far down that it almost feels abstract. There's an entire primeval forest growing on the, uh, the, at the foot of the sinkhole. And um, lots of rare endangered species um, that have totally adapted to this climate because obviously humans can't go there but it is absolutely breathtaking in a very literal way. <sighs> there are more giant sinkholes here in Luoyue County than anywhere else in the world. In Chinese, they're called Tiankeng, or heavenly pits. The famous sinkholes of South America are mere puddles by comparison. This is Hornet's Cave, our entrance to the depths. Even though it's not raining, there's the constant pitter patter of dripping water. And it's this that has helped to form the sinkhole. Wow. I mean, it boggles the mind. You know, these little droplets of water, they seem insignificant now, but over millions of years, over eons, they're able to erode away these giant complexes. They're just monumentous. And it just really goes to show you the absolute force of water. This is what an underground river looks like. You know, rivers like these are the reason why the sinkhole was formed. But even then, all of them will eventually merge into the Pearl River. Everything is interconnected. By cutting their way through the mountains, these rivers have created something unique. An ecosystem with deep echoes of a lost world. 现在已经感觉非常原始了 does feel a bit like I'm uh, walking in the footsteps of dinosaurs I'm sure they probably roamed this area before It's so primeval here I mean, the, It's completely overgrown and there's barely any road to squeeze through It's incredible here It's hardly surprising to find that many exotic species of plant life flourish here.
I wonder, as I stop and listen to the music of the forest, if some of the strange sounds out there might be made by as yet undiscovered birds and beasts. If anyone knows the secrets of this strange world, it's these guys, the Flying Cat Expeditionary Team. In case you're wondering, they're named after a species of flying squirrel, often found clinging to sinkhole walls. Pretty excited because um, finally going to go down to the bottom of a sinkhole. We've got the uh, flying cat team of explorers helping us today. They've been doing this for 17 years, so no better trainers than these guys. <laughs> Here we go, into the abyss. Okay. Oh, this is uh, something else. Oh. Wow. I really feel like I'm entering another world. One where fantastical creatures lurk in the shadows. It's places like this that make you realize how little we know about our own planet and how brave the people who explore them are. Even with all the safety precautions, sinkhole exploration is dangerous. Many years ago, a member of one expedition like ours was lost when an underground river suddenly flooded. A sobering reminder that despite her beauty, Mother Nature can be destructive. From the basin of Nanning and the wide plains on which the river flow, all the way down here to these subterranean caverns, the power of water really is immense. And even though it's still a force of life, of wealth, it's also a force of destruction because here it's quite literally carved the landscape out of these rocks. It's absolutely tremendous. Hey. 